Listen to me, you little punk. I'm gonna teach you now how to wire electricity in your camper van so you don't burn down the entire neighborhood. As I go throughout this video and I'll be mentioning all these different parts, I'll be linking them chronologically in a description down below. First of all, in your camper van, you'll definitely need a deep cycle battery. So uh, we work with 12 volt system. So let's say we have a leisure battery right here that is 12 volt fully charged battery is 12.7 volts. First thing that needs to be mentioned with these capacity is in amp hours. So let's say we have 120 amp hours. This specific chemistry is not supposed to be discharged more than 50%. And 50% is somewhere around 12 point zero uh, volts so this should be your zero percent theoretical of your discharge positive negative so how do you connect wires to these connectors uh, you use terminals let's take a look at the simple principle when you want to wire any appliances like leds uh, water pump fridge all of that so let's take a look I personally recommend always having fuse boxes. Uh, this is the one I recommend, I personally use. I think it's amazing. It keeps everything nice and organized. And if I can give you my personal recommendation, buy two of these. Trust me, it's much better to have two fuse boxes right at the beginning. How you connect, you have two bolts here. So you just take wire. I recommend thicker ones like eight AWG wires. So then you have different fuses. They have slots for different fuses. You can label them. That's absolutely amazing. So what do you need this for? Imagine that you have a fan that is a bad quality or you have a short circuit somewhere on the end of this. And instead of damaging this entire system or causing a fire, you just blow up the fuse. So that's your extra protection. So these cables you can purchase finished or you can just buy meters of this cable buy these crimping pliers and you can crimp there and create whatever you want for a specific length. So then let's take a look that we want, for example, LEDs, right? So you have LED right here. Obviously you want to be able to turn it on and off. So I would recommend you this switchboard that shows a voltage too. So you always see visually how much capacity uh, roughly you have. Or the other option is having these individual switches that you can separately have in different zones of your camper van. So let's take a look. Uh, you just run positive wire here through the switch and you wire it to the LED. And then all these appliances obviously need positive and negative. So that means uh, you need to run negative too. So what I would strongly recommend are these specific ground blocks. They have multiple bolts. So again, you can crimp ending for the cable and you can just mechanically attach to it. So again, the same thing like with the fuse boxes. I would recommend buying even two of these blocks so you have more options uh, to add accessories to them. And again, you wire them this easily. And then you have that LED, so super simple. You take one of those and run them all the way to that. So this is a basic principle of all the appliances, so obviously you have fridge, fan, one of these. Or you can have, for example, like we do, 12 volt projector that, uh, that is 720p and only takes around four or five amps discharge. That's absolutely amazing. All these things, you always go from the fuse box through maybe the main switchboard that you have here. So then through this switchboard, you can run a uh, wire all the way there and then from the switchboard it can go to the fridge, it can go to the fan or it can go to that projector 
And don't forget that the linear actuator needs that specific uh, rocking switch. So this would be a very easy scheme showing you how to uh, wire appliances. Let's take a look if you want to have more power, if you want to have another one of these deep cycle batteries. So don't forget, you need to have same battery capacity. That means 120 amp hours, right? So when you want to be connecting them, you can connect them in parallel. That means positive on positive and negative on negative. Before you do this, make sure both of these batteries are uh, same level charge. So you should check them out with a voltmeter. If you don't know how to use one, definitely check some tutorials. It's amazing skill. When we have this done and sorted out, you obviously want to be charging this somehow. What? I can't believe you're losing attention already. Put yourself together, take a break. Imagine a world where you can travel in your camper van, but can explore locally on a powerful electric bike. You have no limits. You can go anywhere. Look at him go up that hill. Wow, he's so fast. It's been scientifically proven that men with e-bikes are better. Go to mysuperebike.com to build your own e-bike. Then you can be the best. Are you daydreaming? You didn't think it would last forever, right? Let's focus and learn some cool stuff. First, let's take a look at uh, charging from the alternator. That means when you turn the car on, it automatically starts charging. So let's imagine we have this uh, battery that is your car, car battery. So imagine what happens if you wire them exactly like this, like the second battery. Imagine what happens. When you turn the engine on, it starts charging amazing. But what happens when you're overnight uh, watching a movie on a projector and you're running the fridge and all the lights and fan? Obviously, it will be draining the battery. And you don't want to be risking draining this car battery too because uh, you wouldn't be able to turn the car, turn the engine on in the morning. So you need to be switching it on and off. And manually, that's annoying. You want an automatic system. So that's why we have these sensitive relays. So let's take a look. We have a little device right here that you run positive cable from here. You want to have a breaker or fuse. So let's say this can be a fuse. Uh, this can be 80 amp fuse. And that goes to this device. And then from this device, it goes to the battery itself, to the positive. And negative is super simple. That just goes like this to the rest. So this thing is called Relay. And what it does that when you have a fully charged battery that is 12.7 volts, it connects these batteries together. It connects them. And once the voltage drops, it disconnects them. That's amazing system because once you drain them, it disconnects. And immediately when you turn the car on and start, char start charging, it connects them together and starts, them, uh, starts charging them all. Absolutely perfect. Then another source of charging, obviously classic solar panels, right? And it's pretty common. Uh, let's say we have 150 watts and also pretty commonly they are around 20 volts. So that's pretty simple principle that you have positive and negative again. So you can connect them in series or parallel. I would uh, recommend in this case connecting them with parallel. So that's super easy. You connect positive on positive and negative to negative. So what happens next? When you have 20 volt system and your battery is 12.7, 
that would probably damage the battery if you wire it directly plus if the battery is charged you don't want to be overcharging it so you need a device that will be taking care of this M P P T controller so this one is smart it sees what battery you have or you can configure and then it sees when the battery is almost fully charged so it slows down the charging progress and it's absolutely amazing so okay so when you know this when you have one of these devices you buy them based on your solar panels so let's say these ones will be most probably charging with how many amps 7.5 amps so both of these combined it should be 15 amps so let's take a look we want to protect this controller just in case anything happens there so this one has input and output that's amazing so you go input here and then you have a positive input that where we want to have this uh, fuse so we'll just do this I have a fuse right here so if this should be giving me maximum of 15 amps we can easily use 15 amp fuse and that goes straight to input so then when we have sorted this out <laughs> there is nothing easier than this than just wiring it to the battery right but we want to have this protected too so we are going to use a fuse too but be careful this is going to be charging with 12 volts so you shouldn't be using 15 amp uh, fuse anymore so let's take a look if this will be charging with 300 watts together 300 divided by the charging voltage will be a little bit higher let's say 14 volts we should be using fuse that is around 22 amps 22 amp fuse right there output very simple principle one cool thing what i would recommend you is uh, having some more specs and information about what what is happening in your system so I would recommend you one of these cool displays that shows you voltage shows you amps and shows you for example what hours what is happening in your battery so that is super cool because because of all these specs you can actually have a battery indicator showing you level of your battery you can be reading discharge uh, when you turn the projector on and when you're lifting up the bed you can be reading that it takes let's say 6 amps and because of this you see you have remaining let's say 80% of the battery and you know how much further you can go that's absolutely amazing how to wire one of these that's super simple uh, usually they say in a description how to wire it and you need to have device that is called shunt that goes always on a negative so you'll be having one of these devices that needs to be straight on negative and through this device through this shunt you have all the current coming to the system bang and then this one all the drain from here goes to this too and then from this shunt you have uh, two cables if I'm correct coming to this display and then you need to bring their positive two bang and two cables from here so it reads positive and reads negative and sees what is the different and based on that it can be showing you all the statistics not important how it works but it's pretty cool to have in your camper van so this is pretty much the entire concept of how you wire electricity in your camper van it's like an overview and you should be researching definitely all these details on your own like how to crimp wires properly how to be using voltmeter uh, how to treat batteries and you should research all these details on your own you need to start doing it you need to start making mistakes because you want to improve and what you want to get better once you progress and you want something more challenging I would definitely recommend you checking my website my super ebike 
uh, where you have super challenging project of making your own powerful 13 kilowatt electric bike. It's a madness. You need to see it riding and test it out when you have opportunity. I do all of this information for free for the community and if you feel like I should be rewarded, please do so by not skipping ads on our channel. If I can recommend you another videos, I would probably show you our Ventur right here and for example how I built this entire unbelievable camper van right here. So you can check them out, stay tuned on our channel and don't skip those ads, I see you.